Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Shar Weekly. And in this video, I'm going to show you that how easily you can use SIFUI to perform filter on your list of displayed elements. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing we need is obviously some sort of a list with some words in it or names or something. And you can create your own list, but if we are trying to get a large list of, let's say, 500 or 1,000 different words in it, random words, then it will be a little bit hard for us to create. And we can take help from a package called Lorem Swift. So you can see that this particular package is going to allow you to create uh, random words, okay? So the first thing we need to do is to add this particular package to our application. This is the URL that we can add. So if you simply copy this URL, go back, go to File, Add Packages, paste up this particular URL, you can add this particular package to your application. Now I have already done that, so I'm not gonna do that. You can see right here, Package Dependencies. I already have that package installed. So I'm ready to use it. In order to use it, first I will go ahead and import this particular library. Next up, I need to go ahead and create some words. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create 3000 words. So this can be done by simply calling lorem.words, passing in the number, and then you can see that we're spacing them out or uh, separating them out in the form of an empty string. So now we will have these words. Next up, let's go ahead and see how we can display these words. So I'll go with list, words, ID will be self, that's fine, and word in, and now I can go ahead and display the actual word. All right, so you can see already a list of words being displayed. There's a lot, a huge list of words you can see, okay? Perfect. So now we have this list of words. The next step would be to perform filtration. Okay, so let's go ahead and how can we do that? You will see that there is something called searchable that we can use right there. And searchable, what it is going to do, it's going to add a search bar for our list view. So let's go ahead and use searchable. Now we need to provide a binding of string. Uh, so in this case, I will say search text. Now there is no such thing as search text. So that is some sort of uh, local private state variable that we can create. And there we have created our variable right there. In order to see the search bar, we can go ahead and wrap all of this inside a navigation stack. So I'm using iOS 16. If you're using something that is below iOS 16, then you can use navigation view. And now you can see that we're looking at this search bar on the top. Looks great. But how do we perform the actual searching? In order to perform the actual searching, what we can do is we can perform on change. On change modifier is going to fire every single time when this particular property that we're going to specify changes. So I'm going to simply pass in whenever the search text changes, then go ahead and fire this. And it's going to give us that particular value, the new value. So I can call it anything I want. I'm just going to call it search. There we go. Okay. So anytime you put something in this search bar, anytime you start typing something in the search bar, it goes straight to this search text variable. And whenever this search text variable changes, this on change gets fired because we are saying that whenever search text changes, then you fire. If I have a different variable called, let's say, counter, then this on change is going to fire every time the counter changes. But we don't really have a counter, so that's why I'm just going to go back to search text. Okay. And what will we get in the search? Well, we're gonna get every time you enter something in the search bar or the search uh, searchable text field over here, that letter we're gonna get. So if I'm searching for uh, this one, Q-U-I-S. So if I say Q, 
So search will be Q, then search will be QI, and then so on. Now we can go ahead and work on the filtration. So I'm going to go ahead and add a variable over here. I will call it filtered words, and that can be an array of string. And what I want to do is filtered words, we will go ahead and look at the words and we will filter them, okay? So if a particular word starts with something, then we will try to filter it. So we will use starts with, it will return true if that particular word starts with something, so search dot lowercase. Now the way, the, the reason that we're doing lowercase for the words that I'm typing in the text field in the search bar over here, this search field, is because all the words over here, you see, they're all lowercase anyways. So that's why I'm using lowercase. If the words over here in the list were uppercase and lowercase, then I would probably go ahead and also perform the lowercase action on each of these words, like all of these words that are there. But we already know that these are all lowercase and they will always be lowercase anyways. Okay, and now I can go ahead and probably change this words to filtered words. Now, if I change it to filtered words, everything goes away. And the reason is that filtered words by default is empty. So another thing that we can do is we can fire on up here. So when the page actually loads, go ahead and assign filter words equals to words. So this means that when the page is loaded, the filter words will start with everything in it, okay? Uh, what about now if I type something? So I'm gonna type something over here, Q-U-O-D. And now if I remove it, I, see, I can see the whole list. And if I start typing, I can see part of the list. So this is pretty cool that we are able to create these kind of things uh, so quickly, all right? So now we can see, let's see over here, D-O-L-O-R. I thought it's gonna center out one of them. Uh, e, M, okay. Oh, actually every, everything starts with that, that's why. There we go. So now it is actually telling us there's only one result of that one. All right, so there we go. We have created a really easy way to filter our list using SIFUI. So hope you have enjoyed this. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. I just published a brand new course, which is MV Design Pattern in iOS. This is the same pattern that Apple uses when they are building their SwiftUI application. So if you're using MVVM, definitely have a take a look at this one. I think you're gonna enjoy MV Design Pattern. If you're just starting out with SwiftUI, check out this. Uh, also, the links for all the courses will be right there in the description. Uh, there will be discounted prices, hopefully. Uh, I will add the referral link and that will give you a little bit of a discount. If not, then just, you know, keep watching. There will be uh, discounts available. Uh, there, there are always discounts available, all right? Uh, look at the Core Data course, that's the best seller. So if you're learning Core Data, that's your go-to course right there. Hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you so much. See you next time.